Hello! So what do you crap? It's Luke Plowden again. We're gonna be doing 50 questions or 50 facts about me. Uh, we saw that there was some interest for that kind of a thing, so we have I posted a question on Twitter, stuff that you want to know, and then these are some of your questions that we're gonna try and answer today. It's gonna be kind of fast because there's a lot of them. Yeah, so let's let's get right into it. So some of you may know I am half Japanese, half American. And the story behind that is my mother is full Japanese by blood. เป็นคนญี่ปุ่นแท้ๆที่เกิดที่อเมริกาก็เลยพูดภาษาญี่ปุ่นไม่ได้เพราะว่าแบบอยู่กับคนอเมริกันทั้งหมดแล้วก็
we split up into teams of four people, four students in class, and we tried to build this machine that you start, you start with something like knocking a pencil over or knocking down some dominoes, and then by the end of this whole contraption, you complete a task. So for the whole class, everybody had to put toothpaste onto a toothbrush. So that's the, that's the task that we had to do. So we, that, the whole process of building that machine, I was, I was nine years old and working with a group of people, also nine, we had pretty little, little supervision from the, from the teacher. We had to do that ourselves and I won a few awards for that machine uh, in terms of creativity and presentation. Well, that's my favorite elementary school movie. I was originally studying Mandarin to be my major in college, but I was in a relationship at the time and she actually kind of convinced me that studying Mandarin in the long run didn't really make sense because the career opportunities, if all you can do is speak, speak another language, would, isn't really that good. Um, at, at the time that made sense because I hadn't considered acting or modeling as any, any part of my life at that point. So she actually convinced me to switch from that major into business, into the business school at my university. One of the requirements for switching into the business school was taking a statistics course. I met a teacher who really inspired me to love the subject because statistics is, a, is an incredibly wonderful subject and it has so many practical applications in the real world. He, he really showed my entire class the, the power of probability and predicting the future even using using numbers and in data sets that made me choose to do statistics because the career options if you're really good at that subject are are almost limitless in the modern world because every single big corporation needs to work with numbers and data sets on a on a really big scale so understanding how to do the statistics at a high level would would mean that my career options would be would be really great so yes, the, the time that I can remember crying watching a series would be an old Netflix show called Heroes, which is about a group of superheroes that get various powers and the, the, show, is, the show is actually really great. It takes you on a whole journey following multiple characters across decades of, of time and some of the resolutions for those characters are, are quite tragic and I love them so much and I cried. I'm not typically known as a spontaneous person, but when I went to Japan to film Wolf Game Lata, I actually went for several days and we had one day to just kind of explore the part of the city that we're in, uh, which was Fukuoka, Japan. And me and Kay, we went kind of on exploring on our own and sort of went through a lot of different parts of Fukuoka, just walking around to different parts of the city and then going up to uh, one of the lookout towers uh, and coming down on this nice, this rail train and looking out over the city, having some food, etc. So it was our kind of first time getting to know each other and having a good time. And that was sort of the foundation for our beginning friendship. So I, I like to sing and dance. In, in public pretty much wherever. So uh, I like to just kind of sing and dance my own songs or in the mall, in, in the house, uh, anywhere. Uh, and people think it's weird, but I enjoy it. It's a, way to, it's a way to keep my own energy up because I like having a high energy level. It helps me do things in general. It makes me happy. Yeah, but other things, other people think it's weird. One of my favorite movies is this movie called Phone, Bo phone Booth, where there's just, the whole movie is just shot where there's this guy in a phone booth and he gets a call from an assassin who says, if, if you don't do what I tell you, I'll, I'll shoot you right now. And that, that movie was one of the, the movies that introduced the genre thriller to me because there's so many intense and really difficult moments for the protagonist. And it seemed like a really simple concept but they did it really well. So I would like to direct a thriller if I was a director. So there's a personal time for me 
and then there is a time in general that I would like to visit, assuming that I could go back and then just come back to the present. So the personal time for me would be in high school because I didn't join the drama club at, at this school. I didn't join any kind of acting or performance oriented organization. And if I had, I think my life in terms of going into the show business direction would be a lot easier and smoother and I'd have more experience and passion and general inkling for the field because I, I didn't know that I had this in myself to do that in high school. And I, I would go back and tell myself, you need to do this because your life will be really great later. As for a, in general period of time, I probably would have liked to be there when Neil Armstrong and Apollo 13, I believe it was, landed on the moon. I think that would have been an incredible time in history to be alive and very inspirational for the accomplishments of humankind. I would eat any kind of Asian soup. So if we're going a little bit broad, I'd pho, ramen, udon, other, other kind of soups. I, I would eat soup for the rest of my life because uh, soup is great. If I had to pick absolutely one thing, it would have to be chicken pho with nice thick noodles and pieces of tender chicken. Right now, and with the opportunities that I have available to me, I would, I would love to act in a Thai horror film because Thai horror typically does well in theaters. A lot of people go. It, the, we're pretty good at that. The, the Thai industry is pretty good at filming those, those kinds of things. So that would probably what I would do right now. In the future, I would like to be a superhero in an Avengers or a DC film. I would actually like to be friends with people I have caught because I've heard a lot of things about him and that he's really funny and cool to be around. He seems like a down-to-earth guy who loves his who loves his little sister, and it'd be fun to act in any kind of thing with him as as like co-starring or if I was like a a second lead or something like that, anything like that would be really great. I was in high school and I was 14 years old. That was my first relationship. So number two would be tennis, number three would be badminton, and then number four would be football because I can play all of those sports and I really enjoy them. I would like to act in one Hollywood film before I die. At least one Hollywood film. And and have it be like a good film and have it be taken seriously by the public as a motion picture that can be present and rewatched for the ages. That that would be something that I would love to do before I die. And I want to take care of my grandkids and my kids. So at this point, I don't think it's a matter of belief. I think that mathematically, we can prove that parallel universes exist. Uh, but parallel universes, by the way, as a topic is, is very, it's absolutely mind boggling. It means that with, some, with absolute certainty, there is a universe that exists out there where I am the best basketball player in the world or the best badminton player in the world or the president of the United States of America. I just love that concept. So my favorite statistics topic is the rule of 30. So if you have a sample size that's greater than 30, it means you have a pretty good idea of what the whole population looks like. And I found that this concept has helped me a lot to understand a lot of things in life. That if you have just one data point, it, it doesn't really say much. Like a lot of people consider if they know one thing about something, then they know everything about it. But in reality, you need to know at least 30 things of that something to understand anything about the greater population. So I know that was pretty vague, but it's for the statistics people out there. So I think my favorite subject was history. One, I was, I was pretty good at history. For some reason, I could memorize things to a reasonable level. And it helped me understand a lot about the world and how people work in general. Yeah, history was really fascinating to me. So because I came to Thailand 
and it was my goal to get into acting. After dropping everything in the States and coming here, I really wanted to get into the acting industry. And so the happiest moment of my life was finishing my first series. The day when we bit gong. Say that I had filmed the whole series and actually achieved my goal of coming here and, and being an actor. That was a really big moment for me. So my father really wanted to name me Nicholas, but when my mother gave birth to me, she looked at me and said, he's a Luke. So my dad was, okay, he's, he's Luke. And so, yeah. <laughs> Apart from the acting aspiration things, another passion of mine is the environment. At a certain point in my career, I'd like to transition from acting in this, in this kind of lifestyle to environmentalism and whether that be using my platform to help for a different cause. Ma mainly I'm pretty passionate about energy because I believe energy and transitioning from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources is a huge part of the human race moving forward as, as a species. I would like to help that movement in some way. So I, I actually think I do believe in ghosts. I, even though I don't think I've had any personal experience, I've never seen one, but I, I just know so many people that, that claim to have seen something happen that they just can't explain. I think it would be a bit silly of me to just deny all of those other people's experiences just because I haven't seen it. So I, I think I do believe in ghosts. So no, I, I don't like zombies. I think if a zombie walked through the door right now, I'd be very terrified and I might die from that experience. But I like zombie movies because of that same reason. That it's just such a visceral character of a, of a thing to see a, a human that's dead or infected with some kind of virus attacking other alive humans. It, it always makes for some kind of entertainment. There are good zombie movies and bad zombie movies, but most of them are in general entertaining. Favorite book is Ender's Game. It's a fictional story about a young genius boy who tries to save the world from al an alien invasion. Read it. It's, I cried from this book multiple, multiple times. I, I, it's so good. I would like to go to Mongolia. I've thought about it a lot and Mongolia is just one of those countries where I've seen so many beautiful landscapes different cultures and people, and it's a, a conglomeration of all, all different ethnic backgrounds. I'd like to see it. So I had a lot of different dreams, but I think the most memorable one was I wanted to be uh, a novelist. I wanted to write stories and have them be captivating because I was influenced by J.K. Rowling and The Lord of the Rings trilogy and how infectious stories can be into a population and just transform a whole generation of how people view fantasy or different stories in life. So if you're talking about breaking the rules or any kind of mischievous thing like that, I actually don't think I have any. I was a, that, that kind of nerd part of me was, was very big in high school. So I was, I was kind of a goody two shoes. Yeah. So I don't know if I have like a worse thing I did in high school. Maybe I got like a bad grade on on a test or something. That was a, that was a bad moment. I like to play basketball. I like to go to the gym. I like to eat healthy things. Sometimes I make homemade foods. I like watching films, uh, YouTube, going to singing class. I like singing. I like going to karaoke and practicing my lines for acting. I like playing chess. I like playing pool, actually, billiards. Don't care about what other people think and dance whenever you want. I, when I'm nervous or, I, or thinking, I, I do this with my hair a lot and I like to make these yeah, this kind of motion, I don't know why. I picked it up in high school and I still do it sometimes. Like learning any kind of subject that you're not really good at, you should hire a private tutor. Yeah, private tutor's really great. So I'm thankful that my embarrassing moment didn't happen in front of anybody except my dad, um, but 
when I was seven years old, I believe, I was playing outside in my backyard and I had to go poo poo. And so I realized that and started walking back to the house, but I didn't make it in time and I pooped in my pants. And my dad had to help me clean up the poop. So yeah, that was pretty embarrassing. So you remember how I said, like, don't care about what other people think? This is true, but it doesn't mean that you get to disrespect other people just because you feel like it. A pet peeve of mine would be joking about something in a way that hurts somebody else's feelings, and then afterwards saying, oh, I'm just kidding. I, I think you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely, I would. I think the villains and the more, and the characters that have very little moral conflict inside their hearts and minds are the more interesting people to play and they're more they're more exciting on screen so I, I would absolutely like to do that so the languages that i can actually speak are thai and english the languages that i have some experience in are spanish chinese and extremely little bit of japanese because i had to memorize some lines in japanese so I've been going to a doctor about this every six months for probably a decade now to monitor the condition. So I take a medication called sulfasalazine, which helps to slow the sealing of my back together so that I can still move and stuff like that. So medication and frequent checkups are how I fight the disease. I like Iron Man. I, I like all the Avengers characters, but if I really had to pick one, it would, it would be Iron Man because he doesn't have superpowers gifted from s some weird circumstance. He's just a superhero because he's really, really smart. So that's super cool. So right now it would be the Los Angeles Lakers. Favorite player would be LeBron James. But I think a close second of mine would be the Toronto Raptors when they had Kawhi Leonard last year. Yeah. So like I said, a secondary goal of mine is to be a part of environmental causes. So I think if I was to switch to celebrity and then go into that field, it would probably be public office. So a senator or a state representative, most likely for Pennsylvania, that would be where I'd choose to run for office in the States because I can't hear. Go out for the romantic dinner because, yeah, I would go out for the romantic dinner. So I kind of touched on this with the other question, but it is pho specifically. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, I do. I have an older sister. She is wonderful and living in Chicago. I don't really miss my hometown. If I were to miss something about it, it would be my parents, but they actually moved away from there to a new place. So I, I guess I have still some friends that are living in my hometown. So yeah, I guess some of my old friends from that, from that area. In my junior year of college, I was elected to be senator of my, of my school. So my school within a school, I was elected to be a senator for the Colombian College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, of Arts and Sciences, um, I'm pretty proud of my graduating GPA from high school as well as my GPA from college, a uh, great point average. I'm very proud of learning Thai in this amount of time that I have done it. I'm proud of learning learning the language to the point where directors and people in the well, God, but trust me to act in a series and not be a complete waste of space. So those are very happy for me so far. It is not really about looks for me. It's much more about personality and dreams and desires for the future. So I've said this before in interviews, but I like somebody who cares about other people in a big way, not just the people around them, but actually helping the world and helping society move forward. Nice, kind, funny, somebody who I can talk to and have really deep conversations about anything under the sun. 
So that would be my sape. So this goes back to high school. I mean, I I would love to be a drama a, a drama major or a communications major or something related to the arts. Either I would probably be a double major in Mandarin, either Mandarin or Japanese, and like the performing arts. Yeah. So this is kind of a more Asia specific, Thailand specific answer. I am a person that likes to get into deep conversations really quickly. So when I first meet people, I tend to ask them pretty deep questions about the world, about their life, about what they want to do, those kind of things, because I think it it helps me connect with somebody on a deeper level more quickly. Um, and I found that that's not something that people really do here. Um, so yeah, I've kind of adjusted that habit in myself. So I can actually, I can actually juggle. Woo. Some computer batteries. Yeah, I can do that with three and four. So yeah. This has been 50 Facts with Luke Plowden, so I hope you've enjoyed it, and look for more suggestions for videos that we should do in the future. But yeah, see ya!